time this afternoon for What's Hot, where we talk about stories that have all of us talking. We're joined today by Barb Bartline, the People Pro, and Jeff Wagner is here as always. Obese Boy Scouts will be left out of this year's National Scout Jamboree. It's located on more than 10,000 acres in West Virginia. Scouts are going to hike, they're going to climb, bike, a lot of other activities, but they have to pass height and weight requirements, their goal to prevent any serious health-related problems. Well, and, and I think in fairness, they, they also said three years ago when this site was chosen, this is what the rules are going to be. Mm -hmm. And they've also, I mean, you're talking about the most obese. You have to have a body mass index of over 40. If you're lower than that, you have to go to a physician and get it approved. But I think this is one of these common sense sort of things, given the overall environment and given where the location is and given that there's no motorized vehicles. Uh, come on, though, Jeff. Too fat for camp? Yeah. I, I think that I've got a problem with that. Here we've got the kids that would benefit the most not being able to go to camp. Yeah. Now, I agree we want to keep them safe, but yeah. what about having levels, maybe a level one, two, three, four, based on your fitness? Well, but, but Barbie, there's all sorts. Nobody's saying that the kids can't camp. This is their national jamboree. It is in a location in a remote area. It's high up. There's a lot of heavy walking. You're going up trails. It's an adventure sort of situation. There's a lot of zip lines and things like this and again it's only for the heaviest kids that they're not going to let them go and I mean they gave them notice hey you know if you, you got to get yourself in shape so what, what are they supposed to do have some kid up there who then gets sick and then they even have trouble trying to get them out no but they could let them participate at a lower level no I got a problem with that I think these kids these are exactly the kids that need to go to a camp well they can go to all sorts of Boy Scout camps they can't it's not like they're saying you can't participate in Scouts it's not like they're saying you can't go out to you know the summer camp this is the special national jamboree and this rule also applies to the adult Scout leaders as well as a matter of fact I understand it's helped promote nutrition because a lot of the kids and the adults in particular they've been working out to make sure that they qualify What's this. the third part of the Boy Scout oath? Be physically fit. Duty to self. Take care of yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. Be strong. All right. Topic one ends there. Again. <laughs> it does. We uh, it's hot. Again, we're joined by Barb Bartline and Jeff Wagner of News Radio 620 WTMJ. So a couple months ago, more than 200 Milwaukee fast food and retail workers protested, demanding higher wages. Representative Gwen Moore is on board. She believes the current wage is far below what is needed for basic living. Moore joins two other representatives to fight to raise minimum wage. And I know we've talked about this before in detail. Jeff, you, you always point out that this will then put the stress on employers and people will probably lose their jobs. Well, I mean, I, I just, look, I, I'm all in favor of everybody making more money, okay? I mean, I, I think that's great. I'd like to be able to eat Hostess cupcakes all day and not gain weight. You can't do it. Explain to me where the money is going to come from. That, that's the issue. You raise people's um, rate from $7 to $10 an hour. That means the people that are making $10 now have to make $13. Explain to me where the money is coming from. But does it need to go up to accommodate for cost of living these days? Well, I think the wages do need to go up and the minimum wage needs to go up a bit. But this is all market driven. In other words, if they can get enough workers at those wages, that's going to kind of be the way it is. Right. Um, and many of those businesses, I get it. I worked in the food and beverage industry for 10 years. There really is a very low margin of profit. In California, uh, about 13 years ago, at the height of the tech boom out there, they had to pay fast food workers $15, $16 right. an hour because people weren't going to apply for the job if they paid less than well, that. And the truth is, minimum wage jobs were never intended to be, okay, you can support a family of four on them. They're, they're intended to be entry-level jobs. A lot of them are occupied by young, young people. A lot of them are part-time. A lot of them are occupied by senior citizens. The, the truth is, no matter how much you raise the minimum wage, unless you're going to raise it to $20 an hour or whatever, you're not going to be able to support a family of four on one of those type of jobs. Yeah, unfortunately. Yep. A lot of people have had to fall back on those kinds of jobs, though, in this economy. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Last topic. A lot of restaurants are changing it up, uh, making alterations to the menus to woo in baby boomers. Restaurants are realizing that young people are not the ones keeping their business afloat. It's their parents, you know, <laughs> the ones who <laughs> have the money. You go out for dinner with <laughs> mom and dad. <laughs> so what do you think? Is it time I to cater to, uh, you know, this, the, uh, not, not quite uh, the youngest generation anymore? 
I can't believe it took them this long to figure that out. <laughs> I mean, even when my kids go out, they're usually going out on my dime. Um, I think it's about time they do revise some of the menus. Personally, I'm very tired of the standard fare. Uh, when I go out, I want something different, specifically something that I don't make or can't make at home. Uh, so you don't no, want pot pie and meatloaf? No, not meatloaf, not french fries, pot pies, hamburgers. I'm looking for something different, and I'm willing to pay for it. Well, see, and this is kind of a sea change. For, for years and years, for example, the, the radio industry, they, they obsess on, okay, who's listening in the 25 to 54 18 to 35. Age bracket. Yeah, yeah, right, that, that's it. And the truth is, right, in TV, 18 to 35, you, you look at it, okay, when, when I was 25, I had a lot less money mm -hmm. than I had when I was 45. You know, if you're talking about marketing, you know, cruises or go out and buy the big screen TV or whatever, you know, go for the people that have the money. And chances are it's much more likely to be somebody in their 40s or 50s or 60s than it is somebody, you know, in their teens or 20s. We all still have value. Well, nice and plus, know. and a lot of us don't want to cook. <laughs> there you go, Jill. <laughs> go after the boomers. That's it. Barb, they're going to make menus just for you now that they're here and you're willing no to spend. No pot pie, no french fries. <laughs> Good. Thank you both.